There is much truth, even on the psychological level, in this parable. Translate, if we take center stage in a conversation willingly, it's a subtle form of taking the first place. We won't let others talk. The conversation follows our train of thought. We command the time. It happens not only over cups of coffee, it happens actually in the monastic life. For human nature, inside and outside, is not that different. Bear that in mind next time you take centre stage. But I'd like to dwell for a few moments today on the first part of this Holy Gospel. It's something which might be overlooked. The word Shabbat means rest, essentially, in Hebrew. And in quite a few languages still, it is still there in the weekday, in Italian, Sabato, in French, Samedi, and so on. We are still pagans in our language in Ireland and England with regard to the days of the week. Saturn, wasn't he God that agriculture and so on? Now, the Sabbath was after the Constantinian peace put on the first day of the week, although already before that peace, the Edict of Milan, it had been celebrated instinctively from the earliest times. And we know that from the early writings, not only in the scriptures, but also from contemporary evidence. Not only Christian, actually, but Pliny the Younger has a reference to what went on. And the notion, therefore, of some of the elements of the Judaic law shifted from the seventh day to the first day. Sorry, from the sixth day to the seventh day or the first day, if you see what I mean. And therefore, the work element did at that point come in not only by instinct but also by civil law, because Constantine protected slaves on that level. Now, the word servile work comes from that period. From that point onwards, when it entered the rhythm of the week on the level of the areas depending on him, servile work was to be excluded. And therefore, really, the Christian Sunday took on all the elements of the Judaic rest. A day for God. Now, that carried on, and as you know, it was put in the church law that with the obligation to be present in a certain way, not just any devotion, but at the holy sacrifice itself. And to make that possible, they multiplied to the maximum the availability and the number of celebrations. Therefore, we're used to having many, many possibilities, and therefore no excuse. Now, when I was growing up, and when many of you were growing up, there was no question of anything but the Sunday for that. Although, actually, when I was going to the continent already in the early 70s, it had already changed insofar as the obligation was already being anticipated very early on in France and other countries out there. Now, what I'm getting at is this. We grew up, and especially those of us who were in a culture where Protestantism was very much underground and forming the ethos, in a country where it could be felt that there was a Sabbath rest. Shops were closed, things did not happen on a Sunday. One felt it was a day apart. And I actually remember when I was a child, a friend of mine who was from a less practicing family had said to me, should we meet on Sunday? And I remember my reaction was this, Sunday, no, that's God's day. Because I knew by instinct it wasn't a day for doing things like other days. That's just in brackets. The Protestant ethos did form a culture. Now, when I was in Ireland in the mid-80s, it was still the case that one felt 
this day is hugely different. I remember how physically there would be a movement, get people coming on bicycles and tractors and everything to the monastery, anything to get to Sunday Mass, and it was a social thing very much felt. Therefore, it sanctified spontaneously that day. And there will be no question of having alternatives for things at a certain time of that day, organised by Catholic societies. Now, bit by bit, what happened? The element of the anticipation came in fairly late in Ireland and Britain. But it was not correctly understood. It is something which was brought in to help us celebrate well on the Sunday, not to avoid celebrating it at all. Because genuinely it is difficult over the level of the whole church to assure that someone somewhere would always have a celebration. Therefore they enlarge the possibility. Now two things happened. When already under Pius XII, the law of fasting was brought initially to three hours before Holy Communion. That made possible the evening mass. That came in fairly early. What happened there? In many places in Europe, a pattern of the Sunday already changed. Why? One big thing went. The extra bit, which people like ourselves would have had commonly referred to as Rosary, Sermon and Benediction, the Sunday evening devotions. In France it was Les Vepres, Vespers, but each culture had that extra bit for the devout. And it was something that people actually liked. They liked benediction, and no one wanted it to be taken away. That just calmly disappeared around that time. Therefore, it left only the Sunday Mass, because the evening Mass had taken the place of what had been there around the world. Now, okay, but it didn't stop there. When the anticipated Mass came in, taking the place often of what had been, been preparation for an E.G. Confessions on a Saturday evening, something happened. People zoomed into that as a ready alternative, so that they could have all Sunday free. Now look around and be honest, is it or is it not the case that that's gigantically what has happened? Sunday has changed, the balance has shifted from a day for God to a day without God, to have fun on our own, and maybe we've satisfied the obligation on the Saturday evening. The obligation. Now, Benedict XVI came into that and in one of his teachings said this, we must be careful that this element of anticipation does not leave the day of the Lord itself as a day without God. In the East, they only have one celebration, as you know, it lasts three hours. And the whole parish drifts towards that. And not only that, but it's very beautiful the way it's done. I remember when I was in Greece, I was very edified to see how, after the sacred mysteries, everyone went out with the parish priest in his top hat and beard and all the rest of it, and they took over the bar of the cafe opposite the church in the village square. I was invited to go along with them. It was all laid on by the parish. And with the, the, the parish priest, the kind of pope, there in the midst of them, reigning in his glory, with a big smile, he would celebrate also Sunday with his people with a glorified cup of tea or coffee. And I thought, that is interesting. Spontaneously going from one to the other, but all the parish together. And it was something like that also when I was growing up in the Benedictine parish in Cardiff. There would only be the Sunday, there would be several celebrations, but you'd have always a point when the people of God were together and in families, and therefore you discussed what was said in the sermon and so on together. You'd have the same experience of grace. 
And you also shared that joy of the Sunday as a people of God. Now, what's happened? In Ireland, if you look carefully, not immediately, but bit by bit, societies, traditionally bulwarks of Catholic life in Ireland, have started to put on, on a Sunday morning, events at which, e.g., children are expected to be present. E.g., for the case of training, even if it's not a main sporting event, the training will start at such and such a time, and for excellence of readiness for the match, will be there. And they might not have it actually bang on, clashing with the parish, but they might have it, e.g., at 12 o'clock, when the parish is having its mass at 11 o'clock. And so the children will want to be there on time at all costs. So either get the mass short or send them to another mass somewhere else, either anticipation or some other parish somewhere else. And what's going on there? Whereas before, Sunday Mass was lived on every level together and it would be extended as a family into a celebration of the divine in the family ethos, followed by the main meal of the week, which is part also of the celebration. Sunday dinner was, nevertheless, something different when all were there. Now, we have bits of faith and practice in a family even, where you've got so-and-so going to that convenient one, if he's going at all, and the children respecting only the minimum, and not understanding that they're missing the point of the Christian celebration. Now, I just want to finish with this, my friends. Be careful. Because the Holy Father, John Paul II, insisted on this, both when he wanted that there should be a domestic church in Christian families, in which we are genuinely sharing grace and letting God reign. The domestic church is a praying family. But also, in publishing that encyclical, Dies Domini, on the day of the Lord, and he insisted that the Christian people has to be a Sunday people, and Sunday has to be different. I just finished with this, my friends. It happens to be the 8th of September, which for us who enter the monastic life is a day when often one rethinks of the day when one entered. I just found this by chance actually this morning. Things I'd written five years after entering, but it was 1976, the 8th of September, that I crossed that threshold into the monastic life. And I remember, every time this 8th of September comes along, one thinks of time passing, measured precisely by the rhythm of the week and the rhythm of the bell within the day, that God reigns over time. So that whatever one does inside that monastery, one is always protected and called back. Now you put your own case in there. You have no protection. You have no bell. You have no timetable. You are at risk of doing poor things in the quality of your life. Watching television, drinking tea endlessly, and then this other thing of being involved in societies which are, yes, good, but gone out of proportion, where the football is the centre of the world and not the host. So let's get our act together, my friends, because we come this way only once, and every day we have is written on our copybook. We had it once, once only, and it went this way or that way for all eternity. Lines written on the 8th of September in the Carthusian cell of recording the hour of entering five years earlier. The melody is that used by Carthusians at the midnight office. Now as I write, I think again How at this hour on this great day I took one step or one small stone And left the world behind for me Eleven no o'clock was striking then As it rings now with in my knees The only sound that I have heard through these five solitary years. Ring on, I listen to your song, ring on, your voice alone may speak. Ring on, ring on, as you have done, each court, each hour, each day, each week. O sound of time, the only sound, that reaches the Carthusian's ears. Thou knowest not, as every other strikest, what 
its joys, its tears. To the each one it is as the last, it comes, it goes, it comes again. As round and round thou turnest me, while sun doth rise and moon doth wane. O oh Lord, my Lord, did jury to have engines that they make us rule? Long, long ago, when thou wast here in solitude's unchanged school.